Hello there, it's Silverly B here, and today I bring you a tutorial on how to make these three different and very simple clocks for your UI in Unity. So let's begin. For starters, I'll be importing the image with the sprites that I'll be using. So here we have our image, and if you want to use the exact sprites that I'll be using, you can find this image as well as all of the scripts made here today on the GitHub repo linked in the description. Okay, so here we can change the sprite mode of the sprites from single to multiple and open the sprite editor. We can hit apply. And here on our sprite editor, you see that there are more sprites than what we're going to be using here today. This is because some of these sprites I'll be using on the next tutorial that will be about some different types of clocks. You can just ignore them for now, and here you can hit to slice automatically and apply. Okay, so here we have all of our sprites. We can close this and we can see them right here. Now we can start making our time manager. Okay, so create a new C -sharp script called time manager. We can then open this up on Visual Studio in order to work with it. So here on our time manager script, we're not going to be using the start function, okay? And we're going to be needing two constants that are going to be a bit obvious. First, how many hours there are in a day, and second, how many minutes there are in an hour. This is because we're going to be using these values a lot in our code. And in order to keep things clean and organized, we can leave them here and just reference to these constants. Another thing that is very important is to know how long we want our day to last. This means how long 24 hours in our game means in seconds in our real life, okay? So it's going to be a public float day duration. I'm going to start the day with a duration of 30 seconds. This means that 24 hours in a day in game means 30 seconds of real life time. Now, in order to keep track of our time, I'm going to be using two different variables. First, total time. This is going to be keeping track of all the time that has passed ever since this time manager has started. Okay, and another is going to be a variable about the current time. This current time variable is going to be keeping track of the time that has passed in the current day in game okay so here on our update function in order to keep track of time we can just say that total time is going to be equal to total time plus time dot delta time and now for our current time we're going to say that it's equal to what is left of the division of our total time by the day duration now that we have our total time and our current time it's time to start working with our hours and our minutes. First, let's make a public flirt function called get hour. This is going to be returning to us the current hour as a float. In order to get it, we just need to do current time multiplied by the hours in a day divided by the day duration. This gives us a float of our current hour. Now, as for the minutes, it's going to be pretty much the same. So a public float, get minutes. And over here, what we need to do is to return the current time multiplied by the hours in a day, multiplied by the minutes in an hour, divided by the day's duration. Now, the only problem if we do this is that we're going to be getting the total minutes in the current day. This means that if it's 2 o'clock, this function will be returning to us 120 minutes of the day. We don't want this. So in order to get the minute in the current hour, we just need to get what's left when we divide this by the minutes in an hour. Okay, so now that we've managed our time, we can start working on the functions for our clocks. So first, we're going to be making a function for the 24 hour clock. So this is going to be returning to us a string and we can call this clock 24 hour. So here we can return get hour. 
plus two points separating them. And here we can use get minutes. The only thing is here, this get hour is a float and this get minutes, it's a float as well. And what we want is something looking a bit like this. In order to get to this first ground down, this get hour, so math f dot floor to end. And we're also going to be using this very function on our get minutes as well. Now that we've transformed these floats into ints, one thing to note is that this is going to be reading as an int. So if this is 5, it's going to be reading just 0, 0, 5, like this, with only one digit. To make it two digits, we can use two string. And here we can say that this is two digits. So in this way, we get the string that we want from our clock. Now that we've made our 24 hour clock, the next step is making our 12 hour clock. The 12 hour clock is a bit different because unlike the 24 hour clock, it only has digits going from 12 up to 11. I say up to because the 12 here works kind of like a zero. And on this clock, you need an abbreviation such as AM or PM to know if it's afternoon or before noon. Okay, so here we can say that it's a public string called clock 12 hour. And here, what we are going to be doing is first creating an end for our hour. That is going to be math.floor to end. And here we can get our hour. So this end is going to be our current hour. And we're also going to be using a string called abbreviation that is going to start as AM. This means before noon. Here, we're going to work on our hour and on our abbreviation in order to make the correct clock. But what we're going to be returning is first the hour as two digits. So just like before, here a separator. As for the minutes on a 12 hour clock or a 24 hour clock, it's going to be the same. So we can do just as we did before. And at last, we just need a separator and then our abbreviation. So now we can start working on our hour and on our abbreviation. So for a 12 hour clock, if the hour is greater or equal to 12, what we can do is just change the abbreviation from AM to PM and also adjust the hour. So the hour is going to be minus equal 12. This means, for instance, if it's 13, the hour then is going to start to be 1 PM. Okay, so now what we have to deal with is the fact that if the hour is equal to 12, it's going to go back to zero. And if the hour is zero for starters, it's also meant to be 12 AM and not zero AM. So to fix this, we just need to say that if hour is equal to zero, what we're going to be doing is making the hour equal to 12. Okay, looking good. We can save this and go back to Unity to start working with the clock. So for starters, we're just going to be changing the background to something lighter so we can see it better. And here we can start by creating a canvas. Focusing on this canvas, we can create an empty game object that we're going to be naming digital 24 hour clock. Okay, so this is looking good. We're going to start with an image here that is going to be our background. And then a second image for this clock that is going to be the frame on the clock. For the frame, we're going to be using this sprite over here. We can preserve its aspect and set its size to native. By doing that, we are going to be needing to adjust the background in order for it to work with our current frame. Okay, so this is how it's looking. Now, the last thing we need is a text object to work as our display. And here we can just change it to something that we expect to see. We can then start working with it in order to make it fit our clock better. So here it's how my UI is looking for my digital 24 hour clock. Now what we need to do is to create a script 
for our digital clocks. First, let's create a script. We're going to be naming this digital clock, opening it on Visual Studio. What we're going to be needing is first a reference to our time manager. So here I'm going to be using a time manager called TM. At start, our TM is going to be equal to find object of type time manager. And of course, our time manager could be turned into a singleton, but here we're not going to be working with that. And on our update, we're going to be needing to update a text. Since a text is a UI component, we're going to be using Unity Engine dot UI. Okay, so here we also need a reference to our text. And you can make this text public so you can change it on the inspector. But I intend to use this digital clock straight on the text component. Okay, so here, in order to get the display, I can just use get component text. This is only going to be working if we use the digital clock class on the text that we want to show. Okay, so if you want to use this class on a different component, just make this public and ask for a reference for the display. On update, all we need to do is display.text is going to be equal to time manager dot clock 24 hour. Okay, so this returns a string and this display text is going to be displaying the current hour in our 24 hour clock. Going back to Unity, we can see if this works correctly. In order for it to work, we're going to create an empty game object that is going to be our timekeeper. We can reset its position and just drag and drop the time manager here. So here you can adjust the time manager's configuration. And on our digital 24 hour clock, we're going to go into our display and drag and drop the digital clock. Hitting play, we can see if this is working. And it appears to be working correctly. Now, all we gotta do is just make the 12 hour clock. First, let's duplicate this. So select the digital 24 hour clock and hit Ctrl D. Here we can change its name from digital 24 hour clock into digital 12 hour clock. On here, on the display, we can change what it shows to something more like what we expect to see on a 12 hour clock. Okay, we can change its position as well so we can see it better. And here we have it, our 12 hour clock and our 24 hour clock. Going back to our digital clock, what we need to do is create a public bool that is going to be giving us if it's a 24 hour clock or not. So here we have it and we can start this as true. So if it's a 24 hour clock, then this is what the display is going to be showing. And if it isn't, the display text is going to be pretty much the same, but instead of using the time manager's clock 24 hour function, it's going to be using our 12 hour function. Saving this, we can head back to Unity. Going back to our display on our 12 hour clock, we can uncheck this and check to see if it's working. As we can see, it appears to be working correctly, just like we expected it. Now that we have our 12 hour clock and our 24 hour clock working correctly, what's left to do is just make our analog clock. And this time we're going to start by creating its UI. First, create an empty game object here on our canvas that is going to be called analog clock. And now here we can add an image to it that is going to be the background of our clock. This is going to take this image over here. So you can just drag and drop it and preserve its aspect and set its size to native. Now, in order to make our frame, we're just going to duplicate this, rename this from background to frame. And here we just need to drag and drop this, set its size to native. And here we have the frame of our analog clock. Now, in order to make the hands of the clock, we're duplicating this background and creating the minute hand. We can put it behind the frame and we're going to be using this sprite over here. We can set its size to native and change its color in order to be able to see it better. 
What we're going to be doing now is changing its pivot. We need to pivot it to the bottom. And here we can see exactly where it's positioned. We need to position it right on top of the center over here. So like this, it's looking good. And then we can just duplicate this and create now an hour hand. We can put it behind the frame as well and change its sprite to this one. We can set its size to native. And here we have our hour hand and our minute hand. Okay, so this is all the UI that we're going to be using for the analog clock. And now what we need to do is just start to create our analog clock script. So just create a new script called analog clock. We can open it up on Visual Studio. So here, the first thing we're going to be needing, just like on the digital clock, is a reference to our time manager script. We're also going to call it TM. And at start, we have to find it in the scene. Okay, now that we have our time manager, two other things that we're going to be needing reference for, and this one's we're going to be making public so we can reference them on the inspector. They are the minute hand and the hour hand. So here, let's ask for direct transform for the minute hand, as well as direct transform for the hour hand. Now, just like we use constants on the time manager script, we're also going to be using constants here. The first one is going to be a float of the hours to degrees in a clock. So in a clock, we have 360 degrees for 12 hours. So this is going to be our first constant. And the second one is going to be the minutes to degrees. And this is just going to be 360 in our clock for 60 minutes in these 360 degrees. In order to get the rotation of our minute hand and of our hour hand, we're going to be using this as well as the time manager. So here we have that our hour hand dot rotation is going to be equal to quaternion dot Euler. And on our X and Y axis, there's going to be no rotation. We're just going to be rotating on the Z axis. And here the rotation is given to us by TM our time manager, get hour. So here we have the current hour multiplied by hours to degrees. If you save this and check it out on Unity, you see that this goes anti-clockwise. And this isn't what we want. So here, what we need to do is just use a minus so the rotation goes clockwise. Okay, for our minute, we're going to copy this and paste it over here. But instead of our hour hand, what we're going to be using is our minute hand. And instead of our get hour, we're going to be getting minutes. And here, instead of hours to degrees, you guessed it, we're going to be using minutes to degrees. We can save this and we can go to Unity to check to see if this code is working. So here on our analog clock, we can drag and drop this script it's going to be asking us for the minute hand and our hour hand. And if everything's all right, this is going to be working. Let's hit play to check to see. So here we have our analog clock as well as our digital clocks. And all of them seem to be working just fine. So this was it for today, guys. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at how to make the Minecraft clock, the Stardew Valley clock, as well as the Don't Starve clock. If it's already out, you can go watch it right now. If this video was helpful to you, please consider leaving a like. If you like these kinds of tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!